Okay. Alrighty. Welcome, everyone, to Progressive Discussions. Uh, it is, um, what would you say? It is, um, oh, it is April, April Fool's, Fool's Day. Day. Da, 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 April 1st. April 1st. First, the Levity Bell. Then, seven lucky bells for the show. Is that seven? Was that loud enough? I didn't count. I was tasting the uh, lager. All right, we are having, and I made a oh baby, I made a mistake, baby, of not. I always have this problem of mm -hmm. not centering the label <laughs> with the camera cameraman, <clears throat> and I hope I do a better job. Yinling traditional lager beer, Yinling, the old uh, America's oldest brewery. America's oldest brewery, uh, founded in uh, 1829, I believe. Let me oh. double check. Yes, since 1829, craft beer. Nice. Probably the very first craft beer. Um, Pottsville, Pennsylvania. PA. Or is that Pottstown? Pottstown. Pottsville. Pottsville. Ville, Ville. I, I, I sometimes make a mistake called Pottstown, but anyway. Yeah. Because I there hope. is a pot <laughs> Well, if, if they legalized marijuana in Pennsylvania, it would be pots. Everything would be pots down. Ha! Huh. April Fool's, April 1st. Gotta love it. So this will be our April Fool's show. Because there's no other holiday yet. Because uh, Happy Ishtar is not for a couple weeks. Mm. All right. Now, I don't know if I'm properly centering it, the label. I have no idea. I'm trying my best. Yinling Lager, Yinling, America's oldest brewery. All right, good enough. I'm now going to enjoy it. Uh -huh. Well, we're drinking it actually. Yeah, it's very cold. Yeah, because it was in the freezer for a while. I wanted to get it frosty, considering the fact that I was coming here. Oh gosh, I forgot to put the sign outside. Oh no. I'll do that during lunch, unless one, of the, unless one of the cats starts meowing to come, unless Steve starts meowing to come back in, then I'll have an excuse to put the sign up. But I, I don't anticipate. Oh shit! I better not talk. Come in. No, I don't anticipate that <laughs> this early. I know I forgot something. Anyway. I just want to thank, usually I have something, I have companies to bash, but I, I, I have to give them credit where credit is due. I know they're a scumbag corporation that tried to screw over their technicians. Re remember the infamous strike. Verizon a strike for the, with the technicians? They wanted to increase their workload and of, of course they wanted to do typical corporate CEO sleazy scumbag tactics you know uh, lower their uh, 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 lower their benefits and uh, mm -hmm. you know and uh, increase their workload tremendously and uh, I'm not sure if they're uh, yeah they have to be union they're union yeah they have their own they're union. union they're union now whether or not their union right kicks ass I don't know all I know is if I was a union delegate no CEO would survive me. Some of the some of the unions today are rubber stamps. Just take for instance Shoprite. Oh, I, I know that. The union is just in name only, basically. I, oh, that's why. That's all. That's why back in the day when I was a young and and I used to work in a supermarket, the union delegates and everything were a little too palsy wowsy with the store manager. They were a little too friendly with management. You pay your dues, that's it. And you get doo doo in you return. Get doo doo for your dues. Hey, when I went to the union doctor, I was misdiagnosed. Good. He was a quack. Quack, 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 quack. The dentist was a quack. Actually, I met two quacks at the union medical center. So, you know, look, unless, unless the union acts like a union and goes to bat for you, really goes to bat for you. 
And hey, I know people that work for UPS that say the union has not been going to bat for them. They, they're abused terribly. Teamsters are not going to bat for their people at the UPS. What's yep. going on, man? Something's going on. I don't, even OSHA is overlooking well, that's many violations, safety violations. The Republicans were in charge of the Labor Department for the last a few years. Ah, oh, is that why one time I called the Department of Labor in Newark, New Jersey, and the guy says, there's nothing I can do for you? There you go. They probably say that to everybody. Well, yeah. I even called, I even ratted out a couple of restaurants. I called the health department and there's like, they gave some stupid excuse like there's no evidence that germs can be transferred from money to food. Cross-contamination. I says, are you serious? <laughs> Do you know how many, how many hands money, ch you know how many people touch money and you know, God knows what people, where people put their hands mm -hmm. before they touch the money? Yeah. The person working a cash register should never handle food, and, and if they're money. and money at the same time, if right. they're if they're handling, if they have gloves on, and they really have to change roles and go to the register, they must remove the sanitary gloves, mm -hmm. not leave them on. Hey, listen, I've seen it time and time again. What a bunch of bullshit about no cross contamination in other words what they're trying to say is dirt and germs cannot live on money right so if somebody picks their ass puts their fingers through their greasy hair picks dingleberries out of their ass doesn't wash their hands like poppy on seinfeld you know poppy was a little sloppy remember poppy yeah Hey, Jenny, we're well, going to make a very nice, special pizza, uh, 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 food for you and my Audrey. And, and, he, and, he, and he, he, he slicks his hair back and he, zip, he zips himself up and forgets to wash yeah. his hands after he comes out of the stall. Yeah. That's when Jerry refused to, yeah. to take a bite of anything. Of course, they show Poppy going like this with the dough, you know, he's like, he's like holding it up in the hands, you know. Very disgusting people like that. I, I, I have no tolerance for filth. I do not like germs. I like everything immaculate. Becker. The program Becker. You ever see, uh, watch Becker? Ted Danson. Ted Danson was a doctor. Oh, what a grouch he was. Oh, I love him. I anyway, loved wasn't that. he grouchy? Yeah. All the time. All the time. But every time he came into the office, he washed his hands. But very abruptly, and then wipe with a paper towel. Did anybody call him out on that? No. Hey, they, people don't call these uh, food people out on food channels because they don't wash their hands. Hey, did anybody? And then they go and then they take something with their finger. And like when, the hey, Jack for pan. Let me tell you and something. They don't wash. Let me tell you something. When I used to bash Paula Dean on social media for sticking her fat chubby fingers in the food with her rings on with, hold on with her rings on her finger and sucking her fingers I was told I was being negative and toxic they were giving me the Gary Null treatment oh your negativity negativity this is a Pollyanna that talks like that in other words you gotta be a phony and you gotta blow sunshine up everyone's ass and say nothing but wonderful positive things about everybody those are the most sickening people on earth. The Pollyanna and the sycophant. Sometimes they go hand in hand. Uh, but not always. Well, also, if, if you've seen Rachel Ray lately. She got fat. She's getting fat. That's because she got married. Eating the wrong food. There's nothing worse than an Italian girl who gets married Actually, a lot of women do it. I shouldn't blame just Italian girls, but, you know, they think because they hooked a husband, hook, line, and sinker, oh, I got myself a husband. Oh, the, I got the, the, the marriage certificate and the ring on my finger. And if they have one child by him, forget it. He's cooked. He's done. He's, his balls are on a, on, a, on a chopping block. And that's it. And they figure, oh, he's good. He's, he's my, I'm his wife, he's always gonna love me for, for who, 
for who and what I am. Hey, no. Monogamy is much harder work than being single. Monogamy, you gotta work your ass off to, to keep each other titillated, mm. titillated, what's the word? Titillated. Titillated. <laughs> I mean, yeah, to keep the juices going, to hey. keep the physical chemistry flowing. You know, Doc? Anyway, before I forget. Anyway, this is the Grassroots Revolution show. We're not high tech like uh, the Ring of Fire and like Sank over at Young Turks. But then again, we don't owe anybody a damn thing. We're, we're not obligated to hold back on anything that goes through our minds. You know what I mean? We don't have to behave here. But anyway, with that being said, everything we discuss politically is part of our series Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. There it is. Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. Um, but anyway, getting back to Verizon, I didn't think I mentioned the good part is that uh, I, I played a big violin on the phone with customer service. I told them that your Verizon salesman lied to me. He said he was going to give me with the Verizon Files triple package he was going to give me the equivalent of what I was getting with Optimum, okay, which was a cable modem. It wasn't fiber optics. Uh, and I, I, I received the most pathetic bare bones package that you can ever find. Yeah. Not one sports channel, not no sci-fi channel. Yeah. It was horrible. So they, for a few extra bucks, they gave me the equivalency of, I guess, what they call the family package. The basic well, family. Well, lucky you, because tonight on Sci-Fi is The Matrix Reloaded. I was never a Matrix. Uh, uh, you like Matrix? Well, I saw it. I like I like low budget I horror movies with, with freaky monsters. Oh, that, that, well, that's tonight on. Uh, like Pumpkinhead. Remember Pumpkinhead? That's tonight on uh, Channel 33, which is Me TV. It will be with um, uh, uh, comedians. Yeah. Abbott and Costello meets uh, oh, one. Oh wow! Oh, okay. I think they did a Tonight movie. on Sven Gulli, ten o'clock. Didn't they get? Didn't they do a movie with Bela Lugosi? Yes. One time. Yeah. And Frankenstein. Yeah. I um. I have a new uh, album on one of my Facebook pages called the International Brotherhood. Of a cramp of uh, Festivus and Krampus, and I have a a, a classic uh, horror movie nostalgia album, and it's big. It's loaded with nostalgia, and I added a f scary picture of Lon Chaney. Now, that's Lon Chaney is the father of the the guy who the man who played the werewolf was that Lon Chaney Jr. That because was Lon Chaney. Because it said Lon Chaney, born 1883 or something, died 1930. Maybe, maybe that was his dad. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because the Lon Chaney Jr. was after 1930. And that obviously. was, and that was probably when they made those, the, the first, the Wolf Man. I remember that was. It's called the Wolf Man. The Wolf and the different pictures and the. And the hair would be, show the hair growing on his face as he became. The yeah, woman. he was like a husky guy. He was like a like you know like. And then there was one where um, he asked the people well built yeah. to lock him in his room at night because, because he anticipated a full moon. Full moon, and he was going to become the werewolf. You don't want to hurt anybody. Yeah. Yeah, lots I think of that was Lon Chaney Jr. Lin can't Lin lycanthropy. Uh, lichen, lichen is wolf, right? Like, like, lycanthropy. I don't know. I forgot what they call it. Anyway, Yinling. Gotta love it. Gotta love craft beer. I don't know how the hell Budweiser has the colossal goal of calling themselves the king of beer. You know those Clydesdales that pull the beer cart? The beer wagon, I yeah, should yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. they shouldn't pull that beer wagon. They should shit on it. I got news for you. 
They sold the company. What else is there? I believe it's Chinese. China bought Budweiser. I believe so. Oh my. I've had Chinese beer. They, I can taste the rice in it. In Japanese beer also. You can taste the rice. It has that sake flavor. Uh, uh, Qingdao is the Qingdao? Qingdao is the famous Chinese beer. My favorite Japanese beer is Kirin. And uh, I can taste that there's rice in it. Of course there's rice in it. Um, yeah, Budweiser, they usually advertise during like the Super Bowl for all those stupid yeah. inbred, inbred rednecks like to drink that cheap ass beer, you know, Coors Light, Budweiser. It cheap, I think they drink it for the buzz. Well, yeah. Coors is conservative, that's why. The, the, the people that own Coors? Uh, oh, you see how they all stick together? Yeah, so and, it's, yeah, it's like one of those And things. you know what's funny? With, with online dating, if the girl is from the South, <laughs> if the girl is from the South, she always has the words, I'm a God-fearing person. And, 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 and they make it known that they are a Trump supporter. That in other words, they are um, <laughs> obsessively... Uh, devoted, let's put it that way, yeah. to the right-wing evangelical cause, obsessively. Vice President Mike Pence. Oh, that that evangelical freak will not go to dinner with one woman, or you know, like a single woman. Or anything like so that. This guy's like Rick Santorum, huh? He'll go with his wife only. You know how many skeletons people like that probably have hidden away that they're so holier than thou. Well, yeah, they have to have to. Down. You notice how they have to show off their false Christianity in public. They they have to. They're very ostentatious, Reverend Bill. Yeah. Very ostentatious. Yeah, that's what it's about. Look at me. Look at me, I'm close to God. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm devoted, I'm devout. I will never go to dinner with one woman without my wife being there. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, um, oh, Walgreens is now selling the Copper Chef Grill, stovetop grill, the one with the ridges. It's 30 bucks, but it's, bit, it's, it's pretty good size, it's square. It's, it's rather high on the side, which is, uh, which is good for preventing grease from running off onto your stove. And uh, it looks pretty decent. I don't know if you've tried your Copper Chef yet. No, not the big one. You, you got the kit, right? I got, uh, yeah, a $60 kit, with our, which I got. With lid, right? With lid, with right? With lid, steamer, fry pan. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, lid, steamer, fry pan, and the big four-inch pan. All right, so you you got the you got their uh, bacon, and I can do anything. You got their set, you know where? Because uh, I was watching the infomercial today, and uh, as soon as I saw, you know, I mean they they show you that how multifaceted and how diversified this these pans are. Now, hopefully, it's much better than Gotham. Pans, Gotham Steel, whatever you want to call it, or Organic Green. It, 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 for the first week, they were non-stick. After that, everything stuck to it. Now uh, you will, I guess, eventually test it out because you can do everything with it. You could you could use it as a, as a, as a wok for stir oven. fry. You can ro roast it. You can steam in it and deep fry. Yes. And deep fried, and it, and I think it's good up to nice southern fried chicken. Eight hundred degrees, right? Eight hundred degrees. Five hundred, I think. The best, the best, or well, one of the best oils for deep frying, if you're not going to use lard, would be peanut oil. Peanut oil is the oil of choice for stir frying because it withstands high temperatures. Coconut oil too? <laughs> yes, without burning. Like corn oil would burn. Really? Way before soybean oil, corn, safflower. All don't of don't those. use canola. It's uh, it, it, yeah, that's not a you know, real oil. It's a manufactured crap. It, it's, it's crap. Canola. Unless it says cold pressed, 
you know, remember the old Haynes company? Cold pressed organic oil. Cold pressed. Hey, I read an article that uh, they're deceiving people with uh, imported olive oils now. They're not giving you what's on the label, Reverend Bill. It's coming from uh, from uh, Spain. And no, it's no, it's, it, it's not the pure oh. extra virgin oh. olive oil that the, you think you're getting. But I'm just saying that they, they blend it's, com it. it's coming, whatever they're giving you, is coming from another country. Well, Italian olive oil companies and Greek olive oil companies that charge you a lot of money for their oil, yeah. they do get their olives from, olives from Spain because Spain uh, grows it cheaper than everybody else. And it's the Mediterranean, it has the same climate, and uh, that's the only reason. I mean, a, a, a big company, a corporation, they, they, only, they only care about their overhead and their profit yeah. every three months, every quarter. Every quarter. That's all they care about. Anyway, let us sink our teeth into oh, these. Oh, wait a minute. I'm uh, ah. getting back to my copper. You get back to the copper chef. It it sells for fifty nine nine nine. I got it from Starcrest of California for forty eight dollars. Oh, that was that's a good price. So Starcrest. Look it up, Starcrest of California. Look it up, folks. Where we are giving you a hot consumer tip. You heard it from the Reverend Doctor William J. Eisenman. Mm. And it's a good thing I brought two yinlings because I'm going to be I'm going to be drinking the second one. Maybe we are. It depends on how he feels. All right, let's sink our teeth to the readings. If you were excitedly waiting Cucks. for the reveal of Crayola's new crayon color, you'll have to wait. Huh? You starting off the show with crayons? Crayola announced on Friday. Is it a suppository? <laughs> that okay. it is replacing its signature dark yellow dandelion crayon with a color in the blue family. Uh, that, 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 that's like uh, total opposite of why are they discontinuing but the little, the spoiled little bastards don't like yellow crayons? The company gave only two clues about its upcoming color during a Facebook live event held on National Crayon Day. National Crayon Day with a live event? Are you kidding me, man? Why, why don't they just come out with marigold, uh, which is calendula? You know, a, a, a gold. The dandelion is almost that color, calendula. Well, it's like your sand. Well, yeah, you're right because some some marigolds are as light as dandelion blossoms. Yeah, the, but one, the one they're getting away. Uh, the, the French, the French mar. The dandelion is more orangey. The French marigold is a a deep. It almost looks like a like a autumn color, like a burnt orange. Mm -hmm. French marigolds are smaller and they're they're orange, deep orange. Oh. And and they have different shades of the of orange, very pretty. Anyway, that that's what co the medicinal calendula is. It's marigold. I can share two pieces of new information. The first is that the new color will be part of the blue family. And the second is this summer we are going to invoke our fans to name the new color. Because we we want you all to be part of Crayola history. Now, maybe I should have got really drunk before I came here. If I knew <laughs> this was going to be the first reading. Oh, God. It, it's funny, though. It, it's cracking me up, though. Bolden. Melanie Bolden said, More details about the new crayon color will be announced in May. Melody Bolden must get paid very well to be so enthusiastic over the, over these crayons. The company said it was retiring Dandelion from its lineup on Thursday. I'd like to retire this. 
a day before it originally planned to unveil which crayon was getting the axe. In the comments section on Facebook, oh, live video. Here we go. Some fans voiced frustration about Dandelion's retirement and used the hashtag, don't go. Get a life, people. <laughs> That's what William Shatner told the, 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 everyone at the Star Trek convention, right? Yeah. Get a life. <laughs> Not sure why. No. Neil Sardarn is cited to be discontinuing our color. That will make someone feel bad because it may be their favorite color. Oh. Facebook user Rebecca Leach Sadowski said. Sounds like a real idiot. Another user said she hopes she can purchase Dandelion Singles before it's discontinued. Oh wow, wouldn't her life come to an end if, if, if she's deprived of one color of her crayon set? Oh no! <laughs> Yellow is my son's favorite color! You know what, I can't stand, you know, some people, some parents literally lose themselves and lose who they are when they have kids. It's like, they, I hate it, they constantly talk about their fucking kids. Caroline Jubinville Osulu said, another, another woman with no life. Dandelion's retirement marked the first time in Crayola's history that it removed a color from the box of 24. Hey, Crayola, my balls. On Twitter, Many use the hashtag new crayon colors to share their thoughts. The only hashtag, the only hash I like is corn beef hash. On what crayon color and name Crayola should use? Ay, ay, ay. Oh, thank God it's over. Here, you want to see? The no, I, 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 I really, I heard enough. Excuse oh, me. Oh, I can see the color. Oh, okay. I can see the color. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a jabroni in a, in a giant crayon suit. Hey, uh, uh, see? See this? I hope it wasn't too hot in the room for this person. There you go. Oh, man. Whew. All right. All right. Now down to business. Yeah. All right. Well, President Donald Trip. That was our April Fool's uh, gig, but it wasn't planned. Okay focused on reducing the trade deficit. Mm -hmm. Just before, just days before, he holds his first meeting with his Chinese counterpart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what about all that American steel that was going into our spines? Turned out to be Russian steel. Trump's aides insist the timing is coincidental. <clears throat> but the administration is touting the moves as evidence that it is taking an aggressive but analytical approach to closing a trade gap that is largely because of the influx of goods from China. Yeah, what about the quality control from China? <laughs> there is none. Yeah, well... I want to say, when you're done, I want to say something about China, and I'm pretty appalled that they're still doing it, but you finish the reading. Some experts say that orders suggest the president may be taking a softer attack on trade. First order gives the Commerce Department 90 days to assemble a report on the factors behind the trade deficit while the second seeks to increase collection of duties on imports. In remarks in the Oval Office, Trump said he'd seen firsthand as he traveled the country how bad trade deals had hurt American workers. The jobs and wealth have been stripped from our country he said, vowing to put that to an end. We're bringing manufacturing and jobs back 
to our country. The president had been expected to sign the orders after giving his remarks, but left before he signed them. A White House official said he signed the orders later. Yeah. Several economists said it's unlikely the planned report would address the broader economic forces behind the trade imbalance since it would track trade deficits country by country <coughs> and product by product. And the order on trade duties appears to duplicate the standards of a Trade Enforcement Act signed into law by then President Barack Obama in 2016. It seems like there is less here than meets the eye. Together, the orders appear to be a symbolic shot at China, which accounted for the vast majority, 347 billion, of last year's 502 billion trade deficit. Trump referenced his meeting with China in his remarks in the Oval Office. We're going to get down to some very Serious business, he said. It's been very bad what's been happening to our country in terms of our companies and in terms of our jobs. But Peter Navarro, director of the White House National Trade Council, stressed the orders had nothing to do with Trump hosting President Xi Jinping of China at his estate in Florida next week. Yeah, I just can care less about anyone who's in, in within the top of one percent. I really what they have to say, what they think. The top twenty percent is more validity to me because. Some of those top 20s may have been self-made millionaires, but all in all, none of them are paying their fair share in uh, income taxes. And, and you can go back into the late 1800s, mm -hmm. and where they have never paid their fair share. However... The robber baron days? Yeah. When the uh, income tax was first put into law. Right. The tax was nobody down below paid any taxes at all because it was only for the people yeah. who earned six thousand mm -hmm. dollars right. a year. Well I'm amazed that people making minimum wage still have tax deductions. That's appalling. Well another uh, thorn in my uh, Paw. Craw. <laughs> or in, I'm in my paw is the Reagan bullshit about, let's say you are on Social Security. Right. But you're earning money also. And you earn between 25000 and $34,000 a year. You have to pay combine 50% of your Social Security with that money and pay taxes on it. It's like the little guy gets strangled all the time. At the same time that that was put into law under Reagan. And I remember Reagan used to make union people look like they were thugs the way he spoke about them. He also with the Greenspan Oh that motherfucker. They, they <laughs> They upped the FICA tax, the Social Security tax, at the same time. Yeah, he was, and, and, and Reagan also spouted the big trickle-down lie. Yeah. Trickle-down economics lie. Yeah, the point is that he raised taxes for little people, and yet he's known for lowering taxes 
on the big people. And when he lowered taxes on the big people, he used that, that fucking lie of trickle-down economics as a reason. Yeah. There is no trickle-down. The money pools at the top. That's it. And, and, that, and, it, uh, and it came from below. Yes. Um, well, anyway, uh, Reagan was one of the best... Whether he was a moron or not, he was one of the best oligarch puppets that they ever had. Yes, yes. He yes. was he was a really an obedient uh, leader, a follower yeah. of the oligarch. Uh, they pulled the strings, and he and he moved very well. Um, of course, um, the oligarch picks and chooses their favorite puppets. Yeah. Depending on how, how compliant they are. Yeah. Um, Hillary Clinton is one of them. Very compliant. Uh, Trumpy is. You can see Trumpy is because he followed. He's got two big losses so far. The uh, Obamacare failure and uh, the, the um, Muslim Ban. The Muslim ban. Failure. Oh, those rednecks sure disappointed that they can't throw all them dar um, uh, Mus Muslims out of the United States because only only the redneck evangelicals consider themselves real um, real Americans and real Christians in their and their little pea brains. And every time he's losing one, they are still. He's my man. Because they're scum, they're scumbags, they're they're morons, and they're also low lives. His supporters, uh, the oh, I I I I think it's a really good sign that uh, so far Elizabeth Warren has showed up at her second Our Revolution okay. live stream video with uh, Jeff Weaver and Bernie Sanders' uh, organization, Our Revolution. And I think I saw a photo of Al Franken standing next to Elizabeth Warren also. I haven't seen Al Franken show up yet, which I'm really shocked after all the years on Air America, being a devoted progressive. But, uh, I, I mean, it's a start. Elizabeth Warren showing up twice at um, her second Our Revolution video is a good sign that she might be breaking away from establishment um, I don't know if you want to call them neoliberal Democrats, but let's just call them establishment Democrats for now. <laughs> um, you know, Democrats that, that sold you out, the people. Um, and, oh, I want to get very serious for a moment. Um, <laughs> um, unfortunately, um, uh, on... Uh, June 21st, which is the first day of summer, I believe, June 21st, uh, that uh, this uh, city or village in China is having, again, their annual dog festival where they they torture and skin dogs alive and eat them. And eat them. Yeah. Okay. They have a thing for live kill, but to kill a, a an intelligent animal that shows love and bonds with you is uh, despicable. <clears throat> so, uh, any of you people out there want to, uh, who are animal rights activists that want to Google it, that are unaware of this annual event, this wicked annual event, just simply Google it. And um, I think there's a petition going around, or or definitely protest about it, because uh, you know, it's the same thing with, with the Japanese slaughtering the dolphins that come into the bay. Yeah, yearly. Using, it, uh, using the dolphin killing, murdering as an excuse that it hurts their commercial fishing industry. You know what hurts the fucking uh, commercial fishing industry in the Pacific? Fukushima. <laughs> Which... The U.S. media... You don't hear much about. No, the U.S. media never talks about. Anymore, yeah. I don't even think the BBC talks about it. I, don't, I, I you know what? I think they're kept, they're, they're staying, they're keeping quiet on Fukushima, just like they keep quiet on uh, uh, extraterrestrial sightings. I think uh, they are told 
to dummy up, like Archie Bunker used to say. Dummy up. Dummy up. Head. Okay, continue. I am a 26-year-old woman Ugh. who bartends and is starting a career in real estate. Good luck. I've Her been dating my boyfriend. Competitive. Yeah. For more than three years now, and lived with him for most of that time. He is 13 years older than me. He is very smart, financially successful. Oh, they got to throw that in when it comes to the boyfriend, right? Funny and sweet, generous and charming. They got to have money. They can't be. They can't be a great guy. They got to have money too. Okay. However, we have a huge problem in our relationship. His jealousy issues. At times it seems to consume him and always causes a fight. I love this man very much. Sure you do. Wait wait until he's unemployed. See how much you love him. But I don't know how much longer I can deal with this. I would never cheat on him. <laughs> until he runs out of money. And feel his suspicions are unwarranted. He is jealous of customers I talk to while bartending. Well, that's part of the the, the, the job. You, you gotta sell booze. And, and, and guys, if you're pretty and you show a little cleavage, men at the bar will want to talk to you. You know, what if she was an actress? He, he'd really flip out. As I am very friendly to people, which is part of my job. There you go. He hates when I hang out with guy friends or send texts to guy friends. Well, that will bother me. Not not the bartending part, but the hanging out with guy friends is no such thing. They want to get into her pantaloonies, I guarantee you. I have stopped doing this for the most part because I don't want to cause a fight. He knows it's a problem and claims he's working on it. But it seems to me the same, if not worse. Maybe there's some validity to, to his jealousy. Not all of it, but maybe some. He is not go currently going to therapy, but keeps saying he will. Therapy, huh? An example tonight, I went to the gym while he was taking a nap. Half an hour later, he calls me, asking where I was and why I left after getting a phone call. Uh, the phone call was from the veterinarian. You know what? I think 26 years old in this day and age might be too young to get married. Because, you know, these chicky poos, man, they got to have a lot of friends. For some reason, they have a need for it. He was clearly very suspicious and implied I was out with someone else. Amy, I really cannot live this way. Oh, you poor thing. It's not healthy or right. What <laughs> should I do? Yeah, you really, she's breaking my heart. Amy's answer. Financially successful. You cannot live this way. You should not live this way. So please, do not live this way. Jealousy is insidious. It is fueled by a person's insecurity. And jealousy has a way of transmitting this insecurity from the host to the partner. Why can't she bring her boyfriend when she hangs out with her friends? I don't understand, I don't understand why she's not bringing him along. It's like a mad virus. <clears throat> and unless this dynamic is interrupted, you could find your own sense of self seriously he wrote it and she doesn't see why how some things would make the average spouse or significant other uneasy like like this is amy dickinson right yeah she doesn't see that i mean if he was being insanely jealous for like everything every little thing then i would understand but eh, hanging out with the male friends eh. Currently, you report that you have already changed your trustworthy behavior 
in order to avoid a fight. The slippery slope here is that you will start to limit yourself further and further mm -hmm. until your guy's jealousy and anger controls your every move. Mm -hmm. Now, by the way, it's a woman who prioritizes a man's income or lack of, uh, this is uh, technically a glorified prostitution. Uh, that's it. I mean, it is, really, if, you're gonna, if you really analyze it. You know, usually women that want to have children usually eyeball a man's income. Usually. But if you don't, if you don't, if you don't want to have babies, then it should not be an issue. Okay, what do we got there, Chief? Presidential daughter Ivanka Trump ah. said on Wednesday that she will take a formal White House position without pay. Yes, yeah, sure. But will be subject to federal ethics rules. Ah, a little nepotism here. Uh. And they're letting them get away with it. A little nepotism. They're letting them get away with it with um, the brother-in-law. I'm not. I'm not surprised at the nepotism because, after all, His Royal Majesty uh, must uh, have two sets of rules: one set for we the people, and the other set for him. I have heard the concerns some have with my advising the president in my personal capacity while voluntarily complying with all ethics rules and I will instead serve as an unpaid employee in the White House office. Yeah, you, you could bet there's an ulterior motive for this and it has to do with business. Subject to all of the same rules as other federal employees. Ivanka Trump said in a statement issued by the White House, her official title will be Special Assistant to the President. Um, I can think of, uh, hold on, I can think of um, three words, conflicts of interest when it comes to uh, Donald Trump's uh, hiring, so to speak. His whole businesses. Appointing people. His businesses, his sons, and her daughter. All of it. It's all conflict of interest. But they're trying to hold on to it. You know, he's, their tenure. he's really, I'm surprised he's really gotten away with uh, what he has so far this he's, long. Exactly. And I think the only reason why is because the Republicans are in control of right. the, uh, the House and the Senate. Right. And I think that's the only reason. Her husband, Jared Kushner, the Jew, New York City Jew, yeah. has the title of senior advisor. Oh, really? And also does not get paid. Oh, really? He's got a position. Ah. And he owns a bunch of... Uh, Real estate. Yeah, he's a muckety muck in a Manhattan uh, real estate uh, mogul. And he's got a position, an unpaid position. In her statement, don't believe it, there's always a. Ivanka Trump said that throughout this process, uh. I have been working closely and in good faith with the White House counsel and my personal counsel to address the unprecedented nature of my role. The White House said in a statement it is pleased she has decided to take this step in her unprecedented role as first daughter and in support of the president. It added, Ivanka's service as an unpaid employee furthers our commitment to ethics, transparency, and compliance, and affords her increased opportunities to lead initiatives driving real policy benefits.
for the American public that would not have been available to her previously. But Ivanka Trump is not the first child of a president to work for his or her father. John Quincy Adams served President John Adams as a diplomat and later became president himself. Anna Roosevelt became an unpaid personal assistant to her president or father. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, John Eisenhower, worked as an assistant to President White Eisenhower. Over the years, more than a dozen children have worked for President Trafalgar. Well, they keep on making excuses that this guy will, will be, become the Emperor of the United States. Most there have been low-level secretaries, or in some cases, campaign off officers. You okay, sir? I can't hear you said presidential historian Joshua Kendall. Ethics groups that had questioned the Ivanka Trump's volunteer role and how it related to government ethics rules complimented her decision to become an employee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always an ulterior motive. You know, never trust the, the mega rich when they take a position with no pay. <laughs> I think Michael Bloomberg, former mayor of New York City, the little the little short, diminutive Michael Bloomberg, the, the billionaire uh, uh, mayor. Uh, uh, I think he they had. I think they insisted on paying him something, so he took five dollars a year. Yeah, five dollars a year. But I'm sure he did while he was mayor. He did everything. He could to make it advantageous for the, the rich of New York City to uh, to get everything their way. Uh, well, yeah. There's no, you know, like that saying from the Bible, he who makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or as the nail sticketh between two stones, so does sin stick to buying and selling. Salvador Rizzo yeah. through the record our local newspaper details New Jersey's corporate welfare program that results in the awarding of an 86 million dollar tax break to the Democratic power broker George Norcross, a longtime ally of Governor Christie. Uh, what do they call Christie now? The, the outlaw, um, jo the outlaw Josie Whale, or the outlaw uh -huh. Whale. Something, something that sounds similar to the outlaw Josie Whales, except Chris Christie is the whale. Something like that. New Jersey representatives need to wake up. New Jersey is a key financial asset, like the NFL, NBA, MLB. The asset is location, location, location. Well, sure, lo New Jersey is surrounded by, by some major cities. The state needs to charge more, not less, for the privilege to do business here and live here. It is impossible for New Jersey to recapture the $7.8 billion in tax breaks awarded during the Christie Horror Show. Yeah, the Christie Horror Show is probably the eight years he's been governor. Well, yes. Yeah. Corporate but welfare is a fake agreement to create jobs and economic growth. How dare! business leaders and politicians threaten New Jersey taxpayers with economic blackmail. Christie's tenure has been marked with 11 credit downgrades over eight years. 
what have these seven point eight billion dollars in tax break bond done for New Jersey? Our elected officials need to step up and realize the entire state culture, transportation, education. Please understand our economic strength. Location. 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 In New Jersey, uh, I-95 uh, that goes through New Jersey as the New Jersey Turnpike transports um, a huge volume of traffic day and night, every day. Trucks, um, and uh, you know, it's surrounded by cities like Philadelphia, New York City, uh, you have um, Newark, New Jersey. You know, it, it's a very, unfortunately, it's a very densely populated state and I have no idea how they got the name Garden State. California, before the drought, was the true Garden State, but not the congested New Jersey. So anyway. For seven years now, the Republicans have been bemoaning Obamacare. They ran on repeal and reform of the insurance industry. You would have thought that having all this time, on the first available date, they would roll out their grand plan. The grand plan? Yeah. You're being, being sarcastic, of course. Yeah. <laughs> During the campaign last fall, President Trump said he would replace Obamacare with something right. Now is the time for all the hypocrisy to stop. Trump made promises he could not keep. What a surprise. What a surprise. Why can't we keep the good parts of the Obamacare and address the problems with it? Correct them. Call it the American Insurance Act. What, what a concept. In favor of insurance companies, right? American oh. Insurance Act. Oh. Oh, that, that's actually, it's, it's a protective act? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was something that the Republicans came up with. No. Oh. No, all right. But the writer comes up with the idea of easing President Trump's budget cuts of the National Endowment for the Arts by suggesting that if fabulously wealthy artists like Meryl Streep, Tom Hanks, and George Clooney are paying back some of their fortunes instead of hypocritically whining and protesting about the NEA cuts and other more modestly successful aficionados of the artist world contributed their fair share. The NAA would have more than enough funding to sustain itself for a long time to come. Hey, let's expand that idea to other areas of Trump's cuts. Whether wealthy people who were cured of serious diseases should contribute to the National Institutes of Health. Wealthy people who love the environment should contribute to the Environmental Protection Agency. Wealthy people who like clean water should contribute to the USDA Water and Wastewater Loan and Grant Program. Wealthy people the USDA Water and Wastewater Loan Grant Program. Wealthy people whose success resulted from quality education should contribute to programs eliminated at the Department of Education. Wealthy people who like to drive should contribute to the Department of Transportation. It Okay.
okay, Chief? Yeah, well, I've got to find out how it continues here. Uh, wealthy people whose success resulted from quality education mm. should contribute to programs eliminated at the Department of Education. Wealthy people who like to drive should contribute to the Department of Transportation, etc. And even modestly successful people should contribute their fair share to make up for Trump's budget cuts. Wait a minute! Isn't that what we were already doing when we paid taxes? Unfortunately, the tax burden is on the middle class and the poor, I guess, in terms of consumption taxes. Uh, I guess where it's time for us to break for lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that time? So you're setting up for when we come back. Yeah. All right, we're going to break for lunch, and um, you will see how to defeat a conservative Bible verses. Simply hit the pause button, read and learn, plus you will see our website links and promo, and we'll catch you on the flip side. On the flip side. Yeah. All right, excuse me. Ah. Uh. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. 
So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay. We are back for the balance of this week's April Fool's Day Progressive Discussion Show. April 1st, 2017. Seven lucky bells. Now we will sink our teeth back into these readings. Regarding the Iron Rand's influence, oh that ugly bitch, in rush to repeal the uh, Obamacare, it is also worth noting that Rand, like all of us, was a product of her environment. Well, she's she was miserable because she was ugly as sin. She fled Bolshevism after her father's pharmacy was wrecked for the third time by the communists. Oh, she was, uh, she came from an affluent family. And produced a philosophy that countered the entitlement logic of socialism. She was a true American, an immigrant, <laughs> an achiever, and someone who did not see the acquisition of wealth as a dirty thing. What about the uh, the paying of ye merry old uh, taxes? She wasn't too uh, up on that. No. Acquisition of wealth that's that's most likely unshared. She was for the rich. Yes. She acquisition acquisition of wealth meaning I have mine, and that's it. The letter writer misrepresents corporate tax breaks as tax breaks for the rich. A typical spin that casts all wealth, corporate or personal, as the same evil faction. It's evil when you hoard it and you don't pay your fair share in taxes. 
It hurts a lot of people. Only acquired. And the country. At the expense of the poor workers. Well, the middle class are the ones that are hammered. The big lie that columnist George Will and his fellow Ayn Rand Republicans maintain is, mm. in one word, in his column, insolvency. They claim Social Security and Medicare are approaching insolvency. There's no such thing as insolvency in this regard, and Will knows it. They're not broke either. There's only desire, will, and political preference. The Ayn Rand Republicans prefer billions to be channeled to the military, even though the Pentagon doesn't request it. Billions to billionaires who don't need it. An embezzlement from programs for the poor to pay for it. Will closes his column by asking us to have faith in his fellow travelers who say the Congressional Budget Office is wrong. He's saying, trust me. Those magical words, huh? I taught my children long ago. Anytime they heard those two words, their response must be, based on what? That's a great response. Based on what should I trust you? Pa past performance, past track record, is the only way you can determine if you should trust someone. That's it. Well, yeah. I would say. Oh, yeah, definitely. And and respect has to be earned. Uh, a lot of people demand ex respect that's unearned, you know. <clears throat> I don't respect the rich that are stingy, that hoard their money, that are greedy to the point where they feel that um, we're better than everyone else, so therefore we deserve uh, corporate welfare, special treatment, and uh, not to pay taxes. And but you have to you have to pay it. Yeah. Well, you know, and their kids are they want their kids to get special <coughs> treatment also. What was the uh, old lady? Which one? And her husband. Leona Helms. Leona. Only the poor pay taxes. Yeah, the taxes are for the little people. Little people, that's all. Well, that's that's because that's how the politicians arranged it. Exactly. Because the politicians were paid off by the top 1%. That's it. You know, and uh, this is why I keep on saying people that want to uh, save and... Um, rehabilitate or revive, whatever you want to call it, the Democratic Party, as long as the Democratic Party stays establishment, I don't expect any real positive change from them. For the for the asses of the masses. I don't expect any any anything positive to happen for for the for the people. And it ain't gonna and it's not going to. And that's why I keep on saying progressive non establishment third party. You know, uh, uh, and get some heavy hitters on board. Get a Jill Stein. Get uh, try to get a uh, Elizabeth Warren, since she's she's been uh, taking a liking to uh, to our revolution uh, organization. You know, get get some heavy hitters together. You know, build a foundation with this new party. Once you get some people, some famous progressive warriors in there. <coughs> Then it should take off. I mean, um, I mean, God. I mean, uh, when after the uh, 
the Democratic National Cunt Convention in Philadelphia, Bernie Sanders was on a roll. He had the the momentum before he endorsed Hillary Clinton and he, and he burst his own bubble. He took the wind out of his own sails. He, he, he was on a roll with, with tremendous momentum. Well, get that momentum back on board with, with a new party. But there are people who who act like they're devoted progressive warriors, but they are still obsessed with saving the Democratic Party. They haven't embraced... Look, did they pick a leader yet for the DNC? A bona fide leader? Was it that, that progressive man that Bernie wanted? No. Bernie Sanders? No. It was somebody else. He's, the other guy. He's right. establishment, right? Mm, more or less. More or less. Well, then forget it. <laughs> Stick a fork in that turkey; it's done. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not going to save the Democratic Party. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the. I know the class action lawsuit against uh, Deborah uh, Wasserman Schitz I saw is moving on, forwards. I saw her the other day. Giving a speech. She was being interviewed, and she was saying things that people wanted to hear. I well, the, the lawsuit why, is moving. Why forward. is she still relevant? I don't know. Why is she relevant indeed? Because maybe the media is uh, is controlled by the oligarch, and the oligarch likes Deborah Wasserman shits. Maybe that's the reason. Why Why are, are any of them relevant? Why, why do they always interview <clears throat> politicians that are evangelical religious freaks, yeah. zealots? Why are they relevant? Why is their religion or their cult relevant? Yeah, when religion is not supposed to be involved at all in any kind of um, cho choosing for um, uh -huh. leaders, especially someone who's who claims to be a Christian that but that doesn't know the God of the Bible. How, how you know who the fuck cares what they think? Who cares what Mike Huckabee has to say or? Um, Who's the other uh, freak that had something to say? Or a any of them. Uh, Jeff Sessions, uh, Mike Pence, uh, Mike Pence uh, yeah. Ted Cruz, any of these people. You know? Uh, um, I told one uh, evangelical zealot from <coughs> living from one of those. Uh, Southern states. I says uh, no one has been able to prove that their God exists. So based on that fact, religion should never interfere with law. Yeah, well, that should be that should be the first cause for anyone who is seeking uh, the truth about such things. I, I had a little prove that God exists. Yeah, I had a, if you don't do that, I had a disagreement with Ken Creator by he's telling me, oh the. The, 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 uh, you know, uh, I was telling somebody who was an atheist, just look at a documentary about all the th thousands of, of, of amazing creatures that are, are born out of a little, out of nothing, you know, a little, a little cell, little cell, a little, uh, a spark of life creates all these wonderful creatures. I says, Kenny... That's just old-fashioned Mother Nature. That doesn't prove that it was done by by a, a, a god, a deity. That's that's just old-fashioned Mother Nature at work. And then he's saying, "How could it be? How could there be a Big Bang?" There, I says, "How the hell do you know? How do you know there wasn't a Big Bang in the universe? How do you know that that that?" Uh, uh, he says, "Well, well, the." Um, uh, amazing things don't just happen. I says, no, they don't. But that still doesn't prove that there's a God that did it. Yeah. You know, the religion is based on faith. And it's your it's your business if you want to believe what you want. But, you know, you... But they, but they like to force of course, their religion they... on other people. They like to go... They like to go around bothering other people. 
They like to pick and choose those things that they control others with. But they have to they have to bother you. You know what I yeah. mean? They have to and this is what pisses people off. They're saving you. The proselytizing. Yeah. But they don't even they can't even prove anything themselves. Who the hell was it that made us Asenheim statement? Oh, was it Jeff Sessions that said that uh, uh -huh. no, it was another Republican congressman or senator that says God does not uh, poor people really do not want a uh, 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 affordable care act or uh, or universal health care they really don't want health care it, 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 it's it's not the right thing for poor people to to have these things mm -hmm. it, it, God doesn't uh, 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 approve of it or some kind of crap like that mm -hmm. also he has a bat phone to God you know, well, yeah, we, he wants us to provide those things for ourselves. Provide what? You mean... Uh, Health care, uh, uh, job... In other uh, words... Uh, all of that stuff. In other words, he, he, bank fe account? he feels that everybody should pay out of pocket for everything. All right, where do you get the money to pay out of pocket for everything? Work for somebody else. You mean uh, be abused by an employer who wants to pay you shit... Someone, work, who, work. someone who, someone who has been there before you. That's how Republicans think about you mean, to, to the pay, past and the future. To pay to to work for some stingy bastard and work long hours with no no pay no benefits. Well, still where you where do you get the money to pay the doctor? If you're that's, working for a stingy son of a bitch in the United States, that's how it was in this country before the Industrial Revolution before unions, etc. So That's how it was. So their idea of being a real Christian is if you're poor and you and you can't pay out of pocket for everything, you perish. So that, that that's that's all in God's plan according to them, right? Well you, you yeah, drop dead. But they say if you don't if you don't want to provide those things for you, you're just a lazy moocher. Well, the, the, that also means there has to be adequate jobs to go around. Yes, I'm saying this, <laughs> it's all it's it's all an ideal situation. The facts do not comport with it. And the people that come out with these statements are usually wealthy already. Yeah. So it's easy to to shoot your mouth off with all kinds of bullshit when you already have financial independence. All right. Whether it be ill-gotten gain or honest gain, right. it doesn't matter. If you're rich, you have yours. So you shoot your mouth off and give everybody else advice. Exactly. Uh, talking points or... Uh, uh, yeah, whatever. To show that you are... You are in charge and you are... Uh, uh, you are g trying to show the other guy how to get into your position. In other words, you're... Freedom to them, freedom is not helping the poor. No, because the poor are supposed to help themselves. Uh, how does God one, helps those who help themselves. Then, uh, 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 oh, is that, is that sounds like that 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 line that they give: uh, "If you don't work, you don't eat." That's it. All right. Well, how do you help yourself if you don't have opportunity? Well, in the old days, you stole land from someone else. You stole money. You bush on a high coach road. You were, a, you know, a highwayman. What do they call that? Uh, you bushwhacked a mine. Uh, somebody who owned, owned a, a, a mine. A claim, yeah. A yeah. claim to a mine. Yeah. They got bushwhacked. In other words, you resorted. You, you resorted to uh, a life of crime. Beg, a uh, beg, borrow, steal. Uh, no matter how you got it, you were on your own, basically, and you for Oh, that sounds like a really Christian nation to me. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Of course not. <laughs> it's all an ideal. An ideal... You know, that's too... that's too positive a word for a Republican. It's, um... That's how they look at it. Well wickedest people in the world could justify their way of thinking. That and doesn't they, make them... And they do. That doesn't make them good or nice. And they do. Perception don't mean shit unless you prove it. Fresh. 
off a week in which she was criticized for kneeling on an Oval Office couch in a meeting of top black educators with President Donald Trump, Bergen County resident, and White House advisor Kellyanne Conway. Oh, she is a Bergen County resident? Yeah, she's up in, uh, what the hell's the name of the other? Mawa, uh, 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 Upper Saddle River, um, uh, um, Allentown, um, not Allentown, uh, um, maybe we'll run into it here. Uh, it's probably, if, if she has money, it's probably a northern Bergen County town. Um, Fra is Franklin Lakes Bergen County? No, yeah, I don't know, but it's not Franklin Lake. Um, Ramsey, uh, uh, Hohokus, uh, no, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's probably a, who know, Maybe it's Monville. Maybe it's Woodcliffe Lake. Maybe it's uh, it's uh, Westwood. Maybe it's um, Oradell. Uh, In other words, these are all um, these are all uh, higher income uh, towns with very Alpine. Ah, uh, yes. Alpine, New Jersey is is on the Hudson River, I believe. It is north of Fort Lee, north of Englewood Cliffs. Tenafly is up there somewhere. Uh, we're we're uh, Brooke Shields' hometown, I think is Hayworth or Hallworth. Uh, yeah, yeah, Alpine. I think uh, so some celebrities like had homes there, like... Um, uh, the fuck is his name again? Um, um, Eddie Murphy. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Eddie Murphy had a home in Alpine. Alpine. Yeah, uh, his, his movie yeah. Coming in America was on last night. Alpine. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, it's um, it's people who do a lot of business in the city that choose to live in some, you know, really quiet hoity-toity residential area with trees and, and birds chirping and all that stuff, good stuff and privacy but still are not far from Manhattan. Got you. Alright, go ahead. And she said that she was being taken to task because she is a conservative woman. Kellyanne Cuntway. In an interview broadcast Sunday morning, Conway defended her casual seating position along with several other moments in her six weeks in the White House. People talk about the double standard of what a woman wears, not what she said, or what she was doing, X, Y, and Z, she said. What about that crazy, uh Revolutionary War outfit she wore that day. Remember that that, that insane outfit during the inauguration? I think she wore that red, white, and blue. You don't remember that? You never saw photos of it? Oh my God! Oh, I guess I didn't see the uh, inauguration. It was it was a dress that was more ostentatious uh, uh, than the 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 uh, old glory pin that Republicans wear on their jackets. Mm -hmm. It was it was much worse than that. She said to Nora O'Donnell on CBS Sunday morning, the triple standard is that you know conservative women are just cast aside many times by traditional feminist outlets and individuals who control a great deal of the media. Conway's first six weeks in the White House have been rocky. Here's how she responded to some of her big, biggest public gaps. In several interviews, Conway has made a passing reference to a terrorist attack, the Bowling Green Massacre. It never happened. She said Sunday that people should look at the bulk of their career and not just one flow. Yeah, but they don't want the gun control. I see mistakes on TV every single day. And people just brush them off. Everybody thinks it's just so funny that the wrong movie was heralded as the winner of the Oscars. 
you say, well, that's all just good fun. Things happen. Well, things happen to everyone. She promoted Ivanka Trump's jewelry line. Oh, boy. During a Fox News interview last month. That involves making money. Which may be a federal ethical violation. Of course, I felt badly about what happened. Because I am here to serve the president. Who's here to serve the people. Oh, really? Okay. I think, I think Melania Trump tried to use her first ladyship to promote okay. something she was selling. Conway, in January, defended the White House claim that Trump's inauguration was the largest ever as an alternative fact. Alternative fact? Alternative fact. So now you have different types of facts. What if she's the daughter of uh, co comedian Tim Conway? Maybe not. Photographs showed that far fewer people attended Trump's inauguration than Barack Obama. Well, it was alternative information and additional facts, she said, that got conflated. Many felt her kneeling on the couch was especially insulting to the more than two dozen leaders of historically black colleagues who had gathered in the Oval Office on February 27th for a brief meeting with Trump. Saturday Night Live ridiculed her for it on the skit this weekend. Conway, who ran Trump's presidential campaign, said she had round-the-clock Secret Service protection after receiving some threats. In January, Conway said she received a package containing a white substance at her Alpine home. The FBI confirmed to the record that a suspicious letter had been sent to an Alpine home around that same time, but declined to say who the recipient was. Obviously, if they didn't need to be there, they wouldn't be, she said, referring to the Secret Service agents. Okay. The CBS crew followed Conway around on February 26th in Bergen County as she attended Mass with her husband and four children, followed by breakfast at the Valley Diner in Closer. So this uh, term, alternative facts, is this something used by Republicans? Yes. Alternative facts. So you have your facts, and then they have theirs. There you go. And, and their facts do not criticize or diminish or uh, 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 put down their facts. Their facts trump your facts because they have this imaginary uh, thing called alternative facts. Stuff that Fox News gives them. Yeah, and then when, um, was it Sean Hannity was uh, telling uh, Ted Koppel, you know, uh, something about, like, you know, we're, we're all about entertainment here, you know, we're not uh, traditional journalists. Uh, you know, Ted Koppel, of course, with his his very dry personality, said uh, agreed with him. Because you know, the, uh, uh, Sean Hannity wouldn't stop talking and cutting Ted Koppel off. He was cutting off Ted Koppel constantly. And well, that's, he, you how know, they, that's how they conduct themselves. Republicans. He, I mean, Ted Koppel, especially if you're a slow talker uh, like Ted Koppel is, I don't care how honest of an old-fashioned journalist you are, 
those people are going to cut you off. And that's what he did. He was very rude. And um, I highly doubt if he's going to be back on that show again. <laughs> Dozens of 17-year-olds voted illegally across Wisconsin really? during last spring's intense presidential primary. I wonder if, the, I wonder if that's how Scott Walker got reelected. No, this was the primary. Oh, primary, primary, okay. Apparently, wrongly believing they could cast ballots if they turn 18 ahead of the November general election. Wisconsin Elections Commission staff examined voter fraud referrals that municipal clerks said they made to prosecutors following the 2016 spring primary and general election. The commission is set to approve the findings. During a meeting Tuesday, and forward and forward a report to the legislature. President Donald Trump has called for a major investigation into voter fraud and alleged that three million to five million people might have voted illegally in the November general election. A widely debunked claim. <clears throat> the report lists no of underage voters casting ballots in the general election. That's Republican Ted Cruz won the GOP primary in Wisconsin. What? Bernie Sanders won the Democratic contest. The state ultimately voted for Trump in the November general election. Oh, yeah, because Hillary pretty much hung herself. Marking the first time a Republican presidential candidate had won Wisconsin since Ronald Reagan in 1984. The report found at least 60 cases of 17-year-olds voting in the April primary in 29 counties, Kiwanee County, referred nine people to prosecutors for voting at age 17. Rock County referred seven. Racine County referred five. Brown County referred what the report called multiple 17-year-olds to prosecutors. The report did not track charging decisions or for whom the teens voted. Commission spokesman Reed Magney said that he'd never seen this issue crop up before. The teenagers were likely encouraged to go to the polls by messages flying around social media during the spring primary season saying 17-year-olds can vote in some states as long as they turn 18 before the November election. The Sanders campaign specifically was sending out national messages on social media about 17-year-olds being able to vote in presidential primaries. Although Wisconsin election officials didn't see any misinformation from that campaign about Wisconsin, Oh well, well, they're, they're definitely, um, you know, uh, uh, 
voting re reform is desperately needed in this country, that's for sure. Um, to bring honesty, integrity, uh, fairness back to voting is one of the many issues, uh, <coughs> very important issues that has not been solved yet. Gee, isn't that a surprise? Joe Piscopo. Yes. The former Saturday Night Live superstar as he's promoted by 970 AM, the Manhattan radio station that airs his morning talk show, has been busy preparing for a possible campaign for New Jersey governor. Really? Who, what is he running as, may I ask? Governor. No, what, what political uh, affiliation? Oh, I don't say yet. But, and, oh, he's going to be a Republican. Yeah, motherfucker. Well, I won't vote for him. Joe Piscopo is running as a Republican? Yeah. Gee. Mm. I, that, that, that means I won't be voting for him. <laughs> but until Piscopo decides to leap into the race, he remains a career sketch artist and satirist who could then resist the temptation to fire off a few one-liners. Well, I hope he doesn't use Chris Christie's track record for his campaign because <laughs> there's, there's nothing there positive to use. Why don't we celebrate women every day, he asked. Piscopo's burly news anchor and sidekick Al Ketulo was asked. Now, now they care about women? Glancing up from his laptop during Wednesday's show as they discussed the day without women marches. I do every day. And I write an alimony check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, alimony. Another, another one of society's scams. Now, alimony is, is different from child support, right? Oh, yeah. So, in other words, alimony is like corporate welfare. You just, you're paying an adult individual just because you, you used to be married to them. Yeah. Okay, but do men receive alimony from women? Some do if the woman was richer, yes. In other words, if somebody, if one of the spouses in the divorce mm -hmm. is high income, Aside from children or no children, they're not the issue. They get money from the person with the higher income until that ex-spouse gets remarried. Uh, basically, yes. And and if the if the spouse if the divorced if the ex is a wealthy, then there's a good chance that the uh, other person receiving alimony will deliberately not get married because then the gravy train will end. Choo choo! Another one of our scams. I think that will be it because I got a couple of large ones here. A little too large. Yeah, yeah the, the, only, the other scam is when a woman asks a, 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 a man in the initial conversation, what do you do for a living? Now, they may say, oh, I, did, I didn't mean anything by it, I was just curious. But in reality, they're, br they're bringing it up to size up the man's income or lack of. Otherwise, why would they ask? Why does, why does one must have to do something? Do something. Maybe uh, somebody is, for one, one reason or another, on a fixed income. Maybe the person is taking a hiatus from what they used to do. Why must someone be a, a sucker, a slave, working for the man to be accepted by some woman 
uh, in, in, in hopes that there will be sex happening. Hey. Hey, I thought you were, uh, you used to be really a uh, free-spirited guy when it came to sexuality, and, and now you get all, all huffy when I bring up the subject. Well, because, you know, we... Sex, you know, you know what that means? Penetration, man. When there's a we, hole, there's a peg, there's a hole. If there, for every hole, there's a peg. I know, but we live in a society right. that honors money above all else. Oh, you mean the Ayn Rand and, Society? Well, it's been like that before Ayn Rand. Okay? The point is that if you are the kind of person, let's say, who's low income and um, well, let's say you hasn't, hasn't the uh, the uh, wherewithal or abilities to meet women of equal stature or whatever. Why does one have to have equal uh, girlfriend with equal stature, or or because the, the most of your people. If you will talk to them, who are let's say middle class or or have a a, 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 a paycheck uh, coming in from let's somebody, let's say else, they have a profession, whatever. No, even even lower than that. Lower than professions, okay. Yeah, even uh, lower than. They do not accept the fact that you should have the uh, 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 um, the opportunities that they have. The same as Republicans do not believe that if you are poor that you are anything other than a moocher. Right. When you say opportunities, uh, um, you know, I mean, uh, for decades uh, the women have been kept, so to speak, by men. They've been homemakers. Uh, sometimes homemakers without children uh, yet, or maybe soon to be mothers. Now, of course, somebody's got to stay home and take care of the children. That's a given. Who else is going to stay home? Somebody's got to go, you know, uh, make money to pay the bills, and somebody's got to stay home with the kids. But when there's no, when children are not part of the uh, the story, they're out of the picture. Women still uh, like to throw in little digs like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking for a man to support me, but then again, I don't want a man that's financially insecure. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means what I just <laughs> said. They want, they want something, somebody that has a level of abilities to support himself. And and what's wrong with a chick without the with, government? Or what's some wrong other with situation? a? Uh, um, uh, why does uh, why does a, a money bec even become an issue with romance and, well, and, it and is. love? It doesn't become. It is. Yeah, I mean, it, they're two separate ent entities. One is, one is cash. One is 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 a, a medium of exchange. It's money. It's made of paper. It can buy things. And the other one is based on feelings motion physical chemistry yeah but that's you know uh, I mean? you're not going to get those you're not going to get them and they don't want you to get them those opportunities if you cannot support yourself opportunities like like dating somebody that makes a lot more money than you or or even makes as much as you Makes as much as you. Well, that that makes that well then. Which you you know in their their uh, in their level of society. In other words, they 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 want to go one up on on. They like to be in control of the relationship or the friendship. They the, the they people. don't want you. If you are poor, if you are not a social a butterfly, whatever. They don't want you to have the same opportunities as they have. So they, they, they want a feeling of superiority. Whatever it's based on. I don't, I'm trying to understand the logic of it. It's, the it, logic of it is we are a money society. Like in other words... And everybody is judged 
on how much they can bring in. Now, which means that uh, love has become like a sales job with a quota. Because once you stop producing... Go back and read all the great masterpieces. So who the hell which wants... Which involve love or something like right. that. Right. What about Beauty and the Beast? Don't you get the idea behind that? No, because uh, I, I, I can never be intimate with an ugly motherfucker. But that's what she <laughs> did. You understand? I understand. Oh, right. The woman, well, the, ma the beast was the, was the male. Yeah. The, 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 uh, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that if, if, you, if you, have a con you have conditional love, the condition is material things, materialistic money, income, then the love is like, like the weather, it's it's flighty, you know. It's gonna go, it's gonna go bye bye. So why even? Then if that's the case, why even get involved in a serious love relationship? If you go. if you're gonna get dumped once the gravy train stops, or if you get laid off by your company, or you can't find another job. Bingo! That's the way it is. It's like it's a it's <laughs> the same in a certain sense. You can look at it this way. You got poor women, they get themselves into problems, they have kids, all right? And then you have people who are above them in society will say, well, let's tie her fucking tubes. No, they want what the hell is she going on here having these kids all over the freaking well, place? Well, you know what? You know what? An adult like uh, Octomom, I know she's not relevant anymore, an adult woman who's an adult has no business uh, uh, doing things like taking fertility pills if she already has four children. Or if a woman is on welfare and she has two children, let's say, uh... What is she doing getting knocked up another one or two times? Why does she even have to get knocked up if she's poor? See, but the problem you know is I mean? there. Jelly bean? Is it our business to tell that woman what to do with her life? Well, then you, you tell her, uh, you then you tell her get fixed or you're going to get your welfare cut. See, now you just fell into the trap. Well, then what are you going to do? Keep on having more babies and more babies? See, then you... Then but now, that's not what the issue see, is. See, now you're justifying the brood sows that, that the late Bob Grant used to talk about. Right. He used to call them brood because, sows. Because uh, Bob Grant had no business telling them what to do with their lives. But, but they're on the dole. See, that's what's tricky about it. They're on no. the dole. And so is the person that the poor person is looking for to have a relationship with. with. The poor person's on the dole. So they feel that the poor schlub is going to be a burden to the relationship if the woman has... going to let them into the relationship. If the woman has money, or let's say the woman is middle class, Okay, so she has money, and the guy is um, not destitute, but you know, very low income, let's say. So she's treating him like he's a burden. Now, if if they happen to be a great match in terms of having things in common, physical chemistry, so what you're saying is because of our wonderful society. All that good stuff goes out the window. It doesn't even go there. It doesn't even go there. It never there attaches. Because, there's a, never price, get because there. there's a freaking price tag on everything today. And that's why the probably the homeless people are, are invisible and ignored and stepped over on the street, on the sidewalk. Yeah. They're invisible because they're homeless means they have no money, so they become... Uh, Subhuman, non-human, worthless, worthless, invisible. Yeah. Hey, there's your capitalism for you, man. Yeah. But I bet in Scandinavia, <clears throat> people are not allowed to get that destitute. No, because Europe. their government uh, treats them as people. Well, you get a base pay. Norway you treat it pay as a person. Norway will give you eight hundred dollars. Well, whatever to, it as is, as a base. The government is your government. And it should, if it has 
total control over the land, total you have, control so over the So you have money. rights as a citizen. Exactly. You have rights. Rights. Even though you're not wealthy, you have rights. You have a right to a good education. You have a right to health care, good health care. You have a right to a respectable retirement. If you're, if you're wife is pregnant you have paternity and maternity leave and paid right vacation but you have rights and yeah. you have a right to to receive a base pay which in fact the rich pay for like they should so you don't have these destitute homeless people that are ignored that are invisible if you look in the world <clears throat> you see there's only so many billionaires and so many millionaires well, yeah. And their numbers increase very little every year. But they, they hold most of the of the wealth. That's the problem. Like Bernie Sanders says the the uh That's the problem. The unfair distribution or 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 misdistribution, whatever terminology he used, the unfair distribution of the wealth of the of the earth the natural oh, resources of the earth are unfairly distributed and in our society we honor that person who has the land the money the etc you know what the average american says <laughs> to a rich person that's in the spotlight they go oh they must have been doing some that's things correct. right man for them to get for them she used to say that that is correct for them to get where they are they must have done things right. That is they correct. must they must have a great head on their shoulders. That is correct. Not thinking that they they might have screwed their way to the top. Or luck. Even luck. JP Morgan Carnegie. It's involved in there. Yeah. I mean, take take a <laughs> Rockefeller, take JP Morgan. How many people can own their own bank? How many people found oil and, and, and had standard oil. How many people can do these things? There's a certain amount of luck. It just so happens that Henry Ford at that in that era, well he was he's younger than those guys, but Henry Ford was a much nicer businessman, much nicer person than those guys. I mean Henry Ford wanted his employees to be able to afford to buy the cars that they manufacture. Because he understood the circle of the economy. How the, the one dollar continues in a circle. It goes here, it goes there, and it go, and ends up back here. And the little guy puts the money right back into the economy. Exactly. And then that's how, that's the backbone of the economy is mm -hmm. the true consumer has always been the mainstream population. Right. Mainstream. right. The, the rich guy invests it. Or he puts it in a bank somewhere and lets it sit. Now, in this case, since they're destroying the middle class <clears throat> and they want the the enslaved, desperate, very poor, and the very rich, they haven't really thought long term as far as who's going to buy our products. Exactly. But now we have the global economy. Well, that's why they keep extending the economies of every uh, every country. Because they run out of people. Even, hey, let's offer people, we got a big uh, a Ford Thunderbird here, all right? After five years or so, we sell five million. And all of a sudden, the, 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 it declines. And then we're not selling as many anymore. Well, now we have to widen our field of... Well, yeah, hire, hire some more salesmen. Well, I got news for I got news for the corporate America to think like that. You think people in Europe and in Asia are stupid? They're gonna buy. They're not gonna buy an American vehicle with with the kind of hatred that for America for the United States that's out there throughout the world. You think they're gonna buy American products? So what they're uh, doing is they are. Um, they are creating their own future demise. Yeah. And then the currency, you know, uh, 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 countries are rejecting the U.S. dollar now. You know, uh, uh, um, Russia, China, Iran, blah, blah, blah. You know, and, and greed, uh, old, old mother karma is going to do her work. And uh, the greedy will get their 
just desserts, whatever you want to call it. They will get what they deserve because of karma. Anyway, we'll see you next time. This was a rather interesting April Fool's show. Yeah. <laughs>